In this demonstration we're going to look at configuring an iSCSI target and also as well an iSCSI initiator by using Microsoft Technologies. What I've done here is I've come to my server and what I'm going to do on my server is I'm going to make this server here a iSCSI target. So at this point here we'll have devices out on the network connecting through to the shared storage that we will have on this device. So what we'll do is we'll just add roles and features, select our next button and then what we're going to do at this point here is we're going to go for role based or feature based installation and select next. We're going to do it on this server and select next and then what we need to do is we need to install our server roles. So what we'll do is we'll come down to File and Storage Services. We'll go to our File and iSCSI Services. And what we want to do with this server is we want to make this an iSCSI target server. Then what we'll do is we'll select our Next button. We won't bother with any additional features and select Next. Now what we'll do at this point here is we'll have a quick read through, make sure we're happy with everything, and then select Install. This is going to take just a couple of minutes just to install the role. So at this point we'll just pause the presentation and return back once the role has been installed. As we can see now, installation has succeeded, so we'll select Close. Now we've created this server role, the next thing we need to do is we need to just present some disks from this iSCSI target. So we'll come into our file and storage services. Then what we'll do is we'll come to iSCSI. And then within iSCSI, what we want to do is we need to create some virtual disks. So we'll come up to Tasks. And what we'll do is we'll create a new iSCSI virtual disk. That brings us into a wizard. So at this point here, what we need to start doing is we just need to start filling out the information relating to this wizard. So we're going to come for our C drive. And then what we're going to do is we'll just select Next. We need to give it a name. I'm going to call this iSCSI Disk 1 and select Next. Then ask us to put a size in. So all we're going to do at this point here is we're just going to create a small disk. We'll go for 5 gig. What we'll do is we can specify this as fixed size, so this will create a VHDX of 5 gigabytes in size. We can go for dynamic expanding, so it gives us better use of physical storage because it only takes up the space required to store the data. Or we can go for differencing where we point this disk back at a base disk or a parent disk. What we're going to do at this point here is we're happy with dynamic expanding, so we'll select next. We then need to specify an iSCSI target, so this will be the name that the initiator will connect to. So as you can see, we don't have any targets as of yet. So what we'll do is we'll select Next. And then what we need to do is just give this a name. Now I'm going to give it a name of LON-DC1. Select our Next box. And now what we need to do is we now need to just specify which servers can actually connect through to this disk. So we'll select our Add button. Just down at the bottom here, what we're going to do is we're just going to go for IP address rather than iSCSI qualified name, DNS name or MAC address. And then all we need to do is we just need to type in the value. I'm going to go for 172.16.0.21 as the server that will access this target and select OK. Then what we'll do at this point, we're only going to add one server, so we'll select Next. We're not going to bother enabling chat authentication, so we'll select Next. Then what we'll do is we'll select Create. As we can see, it's now going to go through and create the iSCSI virtual hard disk. And what we want to do, just for purpose of this demo, is we'll just add an additional disk. So come back to Tasks, and we'll create a new iSCSI virtual disk. Again, we'll go for the C drive and select Next. Again, we'll just fill out the table. I'm going to call this one iSCSI disk 2 and select Next. We'll go for 5 gig again. We'll leave dynamic expanding and select Next. This time what we'll do is we'll select the target that we've already created and select Next. Click Create on Confirmation. And again, this creates the virtual hard disk. So we'll select Close at this point. Now what we need to do is we need to move over to the server that will now connect through to this iSCSI target. So we're on our server that's going to connect through to the target. We've just come into Server Manager. And on Server Manager, I'll come to Tools. What I'll do is I'll come down to iSCSI Initiator. It's telling me that the service isn't currently running. I do wish to start the service. Then what we'll do just on targets at this point here is we'll just specify the target we've just created. And then we'll click on Quick Connect. At this point here it says we're connected, so we'll select Done. Select our OK button. And then what we'll do is we'll just come to Tools and we'll just come to Computer Management. Under Computer Management, under Disk Management, if we just scroll down, we should find right at the bottom is we should find two disks of 5 gigabytes in size, which we've got. So at this point here, what we've done now is we created our iSCSI target. 
What we then did is from one of our servers is we've connected through to the iSCSI target. Now the advantage of using iSCSI is we can have multiple devices then connect through the target and we can use that as high speed shared storage. And that's the end of this demonstration. Thank you.